British businesses like this because it's a source of cheap labour. I mean, on, on the narrow economic point again, do you, do you basically agree that for those of us in the indigenous population, there's nothing in it for us? All the evidence I've seen suggests that if you take it as an aggregate, then there is some benefit, but that it's probably not huge. But in a sense, I think that's inviting us to a simplistic conclusion of either concluding that all immigration is economically good or that all immigration is economically bad. And that, of course, is a nonsense. Uh, some immigration has benefited us and will continue to benefit us. Uncontrolled, unlimited immigration won't benefit us, even economically. So what we want is uh, an immigration system where you, you ask two questions, basically. The first is, will this individual benefit Britain uh, economically? And secondly, if, if you have a very large number of those individuals who might benefit us economically, how many in any one year can we sensibly take in terms of pressure on social services, public services, the environment and so on? And, and when you can answer yes to both those questions, then you should set a limit and say that's how many we should have well, the, every The implication year. of that, Philippe Legrain, is that there is a tipping point for those of us in this country. There may be some benefits, but there does come a point where we have to say no. We have to also uh, select the good from the bad, and that's not being done. No, I mean, at the point, the point now about um, East Europeans being come, we are able to come here freely without claiming welfare benefits, they're only going to come here um, if there are jobs for them. When they, if, they don't, if they don't have jobs, they're going to go back. But and undercutting if they have, British, if, indigenous and, and, British and, and, workers, and if, is that they, if, if they are, they're, they're not undercutting British workers. They're doing jobs that British people simply won't do. Take the example of old, old age care. A British, a British person, even with no GAC, GCSEs, no qualifications at all, do not want to work looking after old people. Now, the budget for looking after old people is basically fixed because of um, constraints on public finances. If we had to try and lure British people to try and do these jobs, we'd have to pay them two or three times more. What did that mean? That means that old people would go without care or that taxes would have to go up in order to pay for it. Sir Andrew, just, They're not taking just, jobs from anybody. Just before you leave the central point, let me give you a quote from the Professor of Economics at Cambridge. Uh, he said, there's no evidence that large-scale immigration generates large-scale economic benefits for the existing population as a whole. On the contrary, all the research suggests that the benefits are either close to zero or negative. That's simply um, not true. There's now, a study from um, Ottaviano and Perry which shows well, that a 10% rise in immigration, mm -hmm. because um, immigrant labour is complementary mm -hmm. to native labour, actually boosts wages by 3 to 4%. Well, uh, Why is that? It's because if you, have, if you have foreign nannies, they allow an investment banker to go back to work. If you have uh, if you have uh, foreign nurses, they make British okay. doctors more productive. Let, it's, let, it, let, me, let me just bring in the politicians again on that. Uh, Anne Cryer, I mean, is there a tipping point? And do you think you've reached it? I mean, the sort of things that you were saying about what's happening in your uh, constituency. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think we're looking at this in too black and white a view. I mean, to, to talk about investment bankers benefiting from the fact that they can go back to work uh, simply because they can uh, employ a cheap au pair uh, from, say, Poland. Uh, I mean, I just don't go for that at all. Uh, you know, we, we have to look at it in a wider context. What about the impact on Poland? The Polish government is extremely worried because they're losing so many people and right, their skills. Right, but stay, staying in Britain, I mean, are you saying if, in effect it's a class thing, that basically the middle classes might do quite well out of it, but yes, those people who are, who are plasterers or plumbers yeah. are not going to do very well out I, of I it? I mean, I, I actually, I do agree with that. And also look at the other case of um, Polish people or people from Eastern European going to work in residential homes. Yes, of course we do need them. Our elderly people must be cared for. But let's not forget, they must be cared for by people who speak their language. Mm. Many of the people from Eastern Absolutely. Europe don't. It, it is very disconcerting for an elderly person uh, to be cared for by someone who doesn't know their language. So all of these things, there isn't a black and white case of good and bad. There are all sorts of uh, pros and cons in this. And we must look at all of them. Damien Green. I rather agree with, with Anne's wider point that it's impossible to debate immigration and simply do it in economic terms. You know, mm. There is more to life than economics. Absolutely. And as ever, when you have two economists, you'll get three different views anyway. Um, but as I say, the weight of the evidence is that it is slightly positive. But I think to conclude from that that you, we would then get more benefits from ever-increasing numbers 
uh, of immigration is wrong because not, not just for the economic arguments but also for the wider social arguments because what we've seen historically is that in periods when people don't have <coughs> confidence that our borders are under control, that the immigration system is well run, then social tensions increase, particularly in the inner cities, particularly in poor areas. Well, and that, any, anyone sensible wants to avoid that. that that's a fair point. I mean, nobody's suggesting that 400 million people from the European Union are going to move here tomorrow, but in theory they could, and there's nothing to stop them, is there? Yeah, 75 million people, East Europeans, could come here, and so far 600,000 have come, and most of those have already gone back. In fact, only 100,000 have moved and stayed for but, over a year. But you must, the, the, the you problem, must understand the why problem, people are the, No, the problem this, with yeah. the idea is that there's this scaremongering going around that somehow if you have open borders, everyone's going to come live in this country and stay forever. The vast, the vast number of migrants actually come here to work for a short period of time and then want to go home. They're, in effect, international commuters. Now, if you shut this the border... Not it, true. It, it is actually true. If you shut, if you shut borders, you give, you give people a choice between either staying forever um, or staying at home. It, it's the same thing as if <coughs> London said tomorrow, if you want to work in London, you have to live in London. Well, people Let's who live say. in the suburbs who have a choice between moving to London or not having a job what, in London what, what at all. Do you they want would the to what do you want the politicians to do? I mean, what do you want them to do as a change of policy? The change of policy has to be this. The government have to say, we are going to place an overall limit on immigration. Now, it'll take time to implement that. They're going to have to put in place the levers necessary, the policy levers necessary to do it. Uh, that means, for example, checking people, identifying people as they come and go. They're going to do that in a few years' time. But do you have a figure? I mean, do you have it yes. in your head? What, what's yes, your figure? I do. Uh, I think what we should aim to do is to go for a number that doesn't, in the long term, doesn't add still further to our population. Now, roughly 100,000 Brits uh, leave every year. Now, we should be able, roughly within that, to get immigration down to a similar level. We're already immensely crowded in this country. There's very, very strong public opinion against these levels of immigration. Okay. It's time the government took a clear policy. And, and, and cry? 100,000? Uh, no, I, I don't like the idea of have, having upper limits of this or that. Let's look at the quality. Let's say that people entering this country must be able to do a job. They must have a skill and they must have our language as well. We must have a common language. And also people who enter this country, they must be protected. If they don't have the language, how, what about health and safety? And, and there we must look to the trade unions. I'm hoping that the trade unions will be enabled to uh, unionise many of these low-paid workers, particularly in fruit picking and that sort of area. Okay, let me, uh, because let me, let me at just... the moment, I, I do think they're being badly dealt with, uh, the Green. people who are coming in. Um, I, I do think we need uh, controls uh, and we need limits. Um, I, I limits so 100,000? No, no, well, I, I think what, what, what I, where I disagree with Andrew is to say you, you can fix a limit and say that's the limit. What we've suggested is that uh, the Home Secretary, after consultation every year, should set an annual limit of those who come yeah. from outside the EU. And I think it's particularly important to make this point. Outside the EU because you can't do anything about those well, who exactly. come from and what, inside and the And what EU. we've seen over the past two years well, is, is, is a huge number of people come uh, from Poland and the other accession states. Now, that probably won't be repeated. In five years' time, it may well be that a lot of them go back uh, and we'll find that we're short of plumbers again or something like that. In which case, you might well want to say, well, we actually want more people in uh, from the rest of the world. I think you just need to be more flexible yes, and set an absolute I agree that, that. I mean, you can't lay down uh, exact numbers. I agree that's a very good approach indeed. But I think what we need to be very careful about is uh, importing people to do the jobs nobody wants to do. Because where's that leading? Are you going to import an underclass of people? And if so, are their children going to be willing to do this kind of job? Okay. I, mean, I think it's immoral. We'll what we it. should be doing is raising wages so that our own people do these jobs. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you all very much. Now, do join the debate.